Welcome to the Successful Real Estate Broker Podcast, where we learn about some success stories and some not so successful stories. But either way, we learn. Each episode, we talk with successful real estate agents and vendors about things they have done to make them successful and some things they did that you might want to avoid. Join us for each episode of the Successful Real Estate Broker Podcast with your host, Preston Sandlin. All right, listeners. Well, uh, thank you for tuning in. I have a special treat for you today. I have uh, somebody, if, if you're in real estate or on social media, this lady needs no introduction. Miss Katrina Cherry, how are you doing, Katrina? Good morning. I am doing well, Preston. How are you, Mr. Inspector Crazy Pants? <laughs> I know. And, 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 and unfortunately, I'm just wearing um, sweatpants today. So <laughs> I was on a CE class and they're like, what pants you wear today? Show us. And I'm like, who would have told me that? <laughs> but awesome. Well, Katrina, you're killing it. Um, all, all the people who, who know you, seen your, 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 I mean, it's just, I feel like I know you because I, I, all the stuff you post is like so um, authentic and from the heart and a, a mix of fun and you, but uh, for the five people out there who don't know who you are, <laughs> let's back up a little bit and uh, give us a little background uh, on you and uh, how you got into real estate. And, and, I, and I did a little snooping. I saw you're from High Point. Did you go to Andrews or Central? Andrews. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yes. I'm from Kernsville. I went to East Forsyth. Oh, wow. But, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with uh, the, yeah, I think we wrestled. I, I can't remember. Some guy from Central, that dude. Okay. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> give us a little background. Well, yes, I am from High Point, North Carolina. Um, just uh, right there with Greensboro, Winston-Salem, all, all that area of Guilford County. Uh, born and raised in High Point, North Carolina. And I moved to, I have um, a total of four siblings. Uh, my, my mother, me and my sister, and my father, three strong brothers from Bennettsville, South Carolina. And um, I have two children, Lynette and Neil. No, three children, because I have an inherited daughter. Um, Lynetta Neal, Justin Lucas, and Asia Cherry. I have two grandchildren, uh, married uh, 18 years this year. Miracles do happen. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just, I, I love, I love my life. I'm 47 years old and now here in the TK South Carolina area. I left High Point, North Carolina in 2001. In 2001, um, just to start life over, it was crazy going through a messy a messy, crazy separation and just said, I'm leaving High Point. I need to get away from every every person, place, or thing that um, that uh, causes me to want to catch a charge. So, <laughs> <laughs> so not realizing I was part of my own issue there, but anyway, that's another story. So I so, uh, moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I fell in love with the city, had never been to Charlotte. And um, I visited one time to babysit for a friend that relocated to Charlotte the year prior in 2000. And right. I came and I said, wow, you know, Charlotte was totally different from everything in High Point. Um, man, the city lights, the, the fast movement. <laughs> um, it was it was electrifying for me, a, 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 a little small town a country girl from High Point moving <laughs> to the country city of Charlotte. So, <laughs> so came to Charlotte, North Carolina, just to start life over definitely not thinking about real estate. I worked with um, children and families through early childhood development. So okay. prior to real estate, my background is education from early childhood development up to middle and high school, working as a paraprofessional, doing um, teacher assistant, um, the ISS teacher, imagine that. I've done um, <laughs> head basketball coaching, interim teaching um, in Gaston County schools, as well as daycares in the Charlotte area. So um, fast forward to what got me in real estate. Well, my daughter, I was not thinking about real estate. I was um, in college to pursue um, a bachelor's degree in business and leadership at, um, um, at Capella University. Real mm -hmm. estate was the farthest thing from my mind. And my daughter um, showed in 26, 2016, she started reading um, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Oh, Robert Kiyosaki. Yes, yeah. yes. she started reading that book. Um, she started reading other books about um, wholesaling real estate. 
She wouldn't shut her mouth. Imagine <laughs> that, my child. She wouldn't <laughs> shut her mouth about um, about real estate. And I said, you know what, Lenana? I'm I know I'm not getting into wholesaling. I'm not doing it. You know, somebody in this family has to have a license because we don't understand the laws and the contracts. Every state is different. So if, if this family is to get in real estate, somebody has to get their license. Right. And she said, and her and my son said, well, that's you. You're the one that's always talking to people. And I said, <laughs> well, I said, well, okay, they have a point. I still wasn't sold. It took me until 2018 to buy into her vision. Um, 2018 is when the last child graduated high school, which is my son, Justin. And I said, well, okay, everything I've done in my life evolves around the children. So where do I go from here? High school is over. No more crazy mom in the bleachers screaming about basketball and wanting to smash the ref's whistles and all that stuff. So been there, stuff, been there. <laughs> yeah, all that was leaving. And I thought, where, where do I go from here? as a mom um, with my career. So we, after uh, after the last child relocated, we moved to TDK, South Carolina. And my neighbor had a, a sticker on his car that said Costello Real Estate and Investments. And I said, well, okay. If, if ever I needed a sign to, to, put, to move <laughs> forward, that was it. Um, Lynetta and my son started talking about real estate even more. Um, we were even preparing my um, son for college that year in 2018. So I decided, okay, I'll um, find out where do I start? You know, where, where is the course? So we, I began uh, my pre-licensure course in 2019. You know, got, it was settled in my head in 2018, took the leap in 2019, um, received my license in November of 2019, and I hit it running. Yeah. I, did not, I knew nothing about real estate except for what I learned in class. However, the one thing I did know that I wanted to do is I wanted everyone to know who Katrina Cherry was. I wanted them to know who I was. So that's where um, Katrina liked the hurricane and Cherry liked the fruit. That's where that <laughs> came from because I wanted to remain top of mind. I knew that. Just from being in business school, I knew um, building a business and marketing and branding, it went beyond just my licensure. So I wanted to make sure my first year as a real estate agent, a realtor, I wanted to make sure everybody knew who I was. But at the same time, I wanted that to be a positive experience with, um, with a cutting edge of, okay, you never know what she's going to do next, what she's going to say what she's going to pose, what she's going to wear, what shoes she's going to have on, what's her eyes going to do. Uh-oh, she's coming in the room. What's about to happen next? That's what I want in real estate. So does it take a lot of energy? Heck yeah. <laughs> but, I'm, but I'm here for it. I'm here for it. And that part of my business will never stop. I'll always um, keep um, my followers and viewers in suspense because real estate goes beyond the contract, but it's about building those relationships and um, making the difference. Being the difference, you definitely want to see. Awesome. Well, I got so many questions. Okay, let's go. A <laughs> uh, couple of things there I want to uh, back up on. Uh, okay. And some, all right, so I kind of have three questions. Um, okay. Two of them will probably be brief. Um, okay. I want to know where... And, and you do have a presence everywhere. And, and that's one of the things, uh, there's a magnetism about you and whatnot. Um, I'm, 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 I'm kind of curious. I, I think I know the answer, but I want to ask for <laughs> the benefit of our listeners, you know, okay. where, where that comes from. Um, do you, I, I do something similar with my pants, but I, I, I wish I had the persona and the energy that you have, but it, you know, <laughs> I, I got to feel it. I mean, I'm, I'm curious where that comes from. Cause I do think it's a, it's a magnetism. Everybody wants to be part of positivity and energy. And uh, I, I guess energy is a lot of it, but mm -hmm. my other two questions that'll be simple is uh, I'm just asking three at one time. These two okay. are simple. <laughs> Who was your neighbor with Costello and, and number and backing up on the first thing you said, did you ever cruise? I know you cruised uh, in the high point, the, the main street and, and turn around at the putt putt because that was the play. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'll turn it back over to you. Two simple questions and one little more complicated question. OK, so um, the first question was, who was my neighbor? Um, with OK, so that was 
uh, David Harriman at the time, and he's no longer he's no longer my neighbor and no longer my mentor um, at Costello, but it was David Harriman, and I'm grateful for um, what he the seeds that he planted at that time. I'll I'll never um, I'll never disregard that. I'll always be appreciative to um, the energy I ran into with uh, David because one thing that I did when choosing my firm is every agent that I connected with during 2018 and 2019 before my licensure, either they sold or didn't sell me on their firm. Right. So I based my decision um, on the agent's personality, their ability to communicate their craft, their energy, um, their presence, and everything, everyone that I ran into at Costello um, had a had a um, a like minded presence. It was it was positive. It was upbeat. Um, they had um, an individual and collective um, goal in mind. So um, that that's how I ended up at Costello. So uh, but so I'll forever be grateful for um, Derek, David Harriman there. Um, and what was that second question? Well, uh, did you cruise? Because uh, I know you did. If you're from my point, that yeah. used to be oh, that yeah. place so, in the in depot. Point, you remember the main, depot? Main, yeah, Main Street was it in High Point. So from South Main to North Main. Yeah. Um, I you primarily, um, I grew up going to Putt Putt. You know, that yeah. was the hot spot. Um, my, that was the one turnaround. And then it was like, because uh, I had I had cousins in Trinity and we would, yeah. I, you know, we went to Winston, went to High Point, went to Greensboro. But when we went to High yeah. Point, it was, uh, we would turn around at the Putt Putt. And then the, I think the other turnaround was at the cleaners up there somewhere. I mean, you cruise. But it might have been, it, I want to say hot point cleaners, but world cleaners. Uh, some, yeah. That yeah, was the turn. World, world cleaners. But yes, definitely, um, definitely did our thing at, at Putt Putt and some of the bowling alleys. Um, I primarily was in Central Main Street, which was right in South Main, downtown hot right. point. Um, my mother didn't drive until she became an adult. So we always we always use public transportation. So we were always more downtown High Point, where the where the train depot is. And my grandfather, um, Clement Walls, he was part of the furniture market in High yeah, Point. Yeah, that was Carolina. huge, man. That so, was huge. Um, he yeah. was a he was a big name there, and he um, he helped set up a ton of the showrooms. Of course, High Point is the furniture city of the world. Yep. So everybody that needed anything pertaining to furniture. They came to High Point for the mm -hmm. furniture market um, time of the year was when everybody in the world was in High Point and we felt famous. Yeah, yeah. People, people ripped their house out for the week. Yes, I mean, yes, for like yes, a lot of money. So, <laughs> yes, it was it was wild. Um, it was wild. So I grew up in that energy of High Point um, and thankful for that, too. And Mayberry Restaurant in High Point, North Carolina, if you ever went to Mayberry um, Ice Cream Shop, which was off of North Main before you get to the putt but it's still there and uh one of my still one of my favorites and I, oh awesome and, awesome yep and the third question was all right so where uh, th this I, mean, I, I like what you said about you know you keep people guessing what, what's katrina gonna do what's she gonna wear um which is fantastic marketing i mean like it's you know it's a, it's a brand i mean it's just, it's just not not it's not an event till katrina comes i mean how oh, does Lord. yeah how to uh <laughs> Where do you think that comes from? Is it is, is it a combination of things or what, what? Where where? I mean, you know, I always say I always say to people like, you know, you, nobody could be Katrina, nobody could be me, nobody could be Larry, but I always think like I could you could pick and choose a little bit of what they do and and then add a whole bunch of yourself into it and i don't know but sorry i'm yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not letting you answer the question sorry go ahead oh, it's okay so where did that come from i would say it man i have not no i've not always been like this now i've always been hyper because i got in trouble for talking too much in school always in time out somewhere from not sitting <laughs> still you know when you grew up going to school in the early 80s you, I mean, you weren't, you weren't allowed to be hyper. You know, we, you we, didn't to, have, we didn't have texting, so we had to talk yeah, and pass right, notes. You, <laughs> right. So, you know, I was always that kid that was all over the place, always in trouble, could not, could, could not um, keep all that energy in a bottle. But um, the confidence, the attitude, all of that uh, didn't come into my adult years because I battled with low self-esteem, um, bullying, 
um, um, coming through element coming through elementary school, low self-esteem, bullying, um, home life was crazy. My mom was always out of the box though. Like she she's still out of the box. It's, um, she'll be 65 in March and you just never know with her sometimes. <laughs> so, but that that came from who I am today came from who I who I was not then, if that right. makes sense. So battling with low self-esteem, battling with, with worrying about what people might think, say, and do. Um, and, it, and it causes torment. Like if everything you do, everywhere you go, everything you say, you're worried about who's going to say what this person, how this person is going to respond. Um, it's torment. I got sick of that. And then going through, going through a divorce in 2000, in 2003 to 2004, geez, it shouldn't have took that long. My God. But anyway, <laughs> going, going through, going through those, those negative hard times. And I, I, I hit rock bottom in a lot of places of my life. And a lot of that was, I did not know who I was. I didn't value myself, didn't love myself enough. And the final straw was when I almost went to a mental health professional because I thought I was crazy for all the negative emotions I had. I thought I needed to be balanced out, calm down. I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do in my life. So one day after experiencing a panic attack, and this was in maybe 2005, and I said, you know what? This mess that I'm dealing with is simply because I put too much emphasis on what people think, on what they say. I put too much emphasis on their opinions. From, right. And from that point, I said, that's it. I do not care. It's about <laughs> what God thinks. It's about what I think. And if you don't like it, you can take it up with God because this is Katrina. This is who I am. And I'm not going back. So, <laughs> nice. so who I am today came from, you know, the battles that I had in the past. Um, I am, I am 100% could content and happy with the Katrina that I am today. And I put all of that into my branding because my business can't be what it is if I am not who I am and confident in that. Real estate is hard. Oh, Building is. a business is, is difficult. Um, real estate can pretty much be dogmatic, but I am here. I got to take my glasses off for this. I needed to be understood that <laughs> I am here to disrupt natural or by <laughs> all means short of sin and a legal charge but i'm here to disrupt <laughs> order i am the one that's going to rock the boat ruffle the feathers and cause a strong wind i'm here for it uh, here all, you go. all while doing real estate and being the difference i want to see <laughs> awesome awesome i love it well let, let's let's talk about real estate a little bit um uh -huh. you know a lot of people you know, I, I, let me let me let me preface this by saying this: I sponsor you know a lot of stuff, and I sponsor the new agent orientation. Mm -hmm. And I always look out into the crowd, and I've done it for years, you know. Uh -huh. And then later, I see some of these people, you know, in in you know awarded this award or that award, and then other times I see them doing something completely different. My point <laughs> is, a lot of people wash out. Uh, you yeah, know, I'm always yeah. looking. I'm always trying to guess who are the ones that are going to be rock stars, and who are the ones that are going to wash out. And yeah. I mean, you, you're you're what in year three now with a lot of momentum, um, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. I mean, a lot of people don't make it past year one. So <laughs> what? I, I guess I have a couple of questions. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it what advice would you give? What do you think the secret ingredient or the secret sauce is? And how you, you know? What advice would you give to people, you know, starting out in real estate that, I mean, you obviously like a lot of people, I mean, you know, try some things that don't work and stick with some things that do work. And, you know, I know there's a lot to it. Um, I know you do a lot of social media. There's a lot of, you know, people say calling Fizbo's and expired mm -hmm. listings and stuff like that or door knocking. Uh -huh. And anyway, what's your formula for success and what advice would you give uh, to somebody going into business today. And, and it, you know, they might, they can't be Katrina, but what could they do, you know? Uh, well, sorry. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay. Sorry about yeah. that. That's all right. coming. So, um, so the secret sauce, what, what it takes, I would say just starting out, you definitely have to have a resolve about your big why. 
What in the world is your big why? Because the big why is what holds you in the road. That why can be revised, rerouted, changed, reworded, redefined. But coming into real estate, you have to know and understand exactly what, what is it that you're looking for? What are you after? Um, of course, most people get into real estate because they want the money. That's how you cause yourself to burn out quickly. Because in starting out, you definitely need to have, um, it's smart to have at least six months to a year um, of your income in the bank somewhere. I did not have that. So what I had was sponsors is what I call it. My sponsors was my are my husband and my children. Every fee, every everything that I needed to start out in real estate, they sponsored it. So I had that um, luxury, so to speak, that anything that I needed to build my business, because my goal is also not to go in debt, um, building my business. So they, and they came along and shared in the vision with me, and they helped me cover a lot of my expenses um, the first um, two years, actually. And they continue to be that financial support. So definitely having a, an attainable goal, um, knowing your why. If you look to the left and compare yourself to this top producer, you look to the right, you um, compare yourself to this top producer, you're going to lose momentum because none of us can do it like the next person, but we can all learn from one another. Right. Um, and I'm, we're in the Charlotte region. It's, uh, it's thousands of us doing different things. I wanted to make sure that I stood out and was set apart, realizing that I too can make a difference in this big industry. But no, but starting out, you really need to know your big why. And it has to go beyond the money itself. So you need, um, you literally need to have your own vision statement. You need to have your own vision statement. Um, you need to be confident. You need to be courageous, be open-minded. Um, don't just think outside the box. Kick the box <laughs> and, stay, and, and, and keep warm when you burn the box because you have to think outside of the box we're in this 21st century of real estate as well as the pandemic era, which is going to require that you're creative and innovative. You know, just you can't just have one, one, um, one set of tools to reach every goal. You have to be, you have to be, um, you have to have a variety of that. So definitely remaining coachable and teachable, understanding that um, growing into that agent you want to be. Um, is a everyday, all day job. None of us have arrived. I don't care who it is. None of us have arrived because the world is always changing and there's al always a need to pivot. Um, I tell myself, because I'm a basketball fan, you know, thanks to my son, you know, I grew up um, and I called him, I told him I was his business manager when he was in elementary school. But mm -hmm. one thing we, um, because he was the small guy on the team, it was important for us that he understood offense and defense and perfected his craft. So that required training, investment into quality training. Um, it, it required doing it more than one way, going, um, going to different, um, linking up with different coaches, um, different programs to teach that skill set. And what I mean by that is doing what you have to do to learn offense and defensive strategies that keep you afloat in the industry. Um, it goes, it goes beyond just, I just want, I want to be a realtor. That's not enough. What do you mean you want to be a realtor? Are you aware of what it takes? I've had a ton of people um, reach out to me and say they're inspired by me on social media. I want to be a realtor. And then you have the amazing selling, uh, selling sunset, the amazing selling Tampa, HGTV and everything Millionaire else. real estate yeah, agent. Yeah, uh, everything else that highlights Ryan Sirhan, the joys. Sirhan or whatever his name is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They highlight the joys of real estate, but it's the stuff that's off camera that makes you who you are and right. drive you insane at the same, at the same time. So um, to, to go back um, for that new agent, know your big why. You know, what is it that you truly want to achieve in real estate? What is the why behind wanting to become a realtor? Um, it's not, you know, seeing faces on billboards. That's amazing. One day I'm going to be up on that billboard and I hope my eyes are big and bright. I don't want to cause any wrecks, but I do want to get your attention. But one day I will be on a billboard, but that's not hard. If you got money, anybody can be on a billboard. That's not hard. That, I hear that's, you. 
that that's not hard. Um, so just um, know that big why. Put in the work. Ask lots of questions. Um, follow realtors, it, local realtors, to see what they're doing. If you're in the Charlotte region, following everybody in California, you're going to miss something. You need to be you need to be well connected to your market. If, yeah, I, was, if I wasn't on Zoom, my phone wouldn't be ringing. So, oh, that's what be, that is. <laughs> yeah, you need to be well connected to what's going on in your market. Connect to that realtor or, or follow that realtor. Some, some realtors are so busy, they don't have time for the one-on-ones, but at least follow them and see what they're doing. But stay, um, stay well connected to your local mar market so that you're well versed in it. If, if you're in Charlotte and someone reach, reaches out to you in the Charlotte market, you need to be able to explain your market to them. Right, so right. so um, that, those are such, so the secret sauce to me is for the secret sauce for me is know your big why, remain coachable and teachable, ask lots of questions and understand what it means to build an offensive and defensive strategy or you will not win your own championship. Um, if you're, I, I'm a collaborator. I refuse to um, to be scarcity mindset to have a scarcity mindset to where I'm competing with my colleagues. I am a collaborator, so it means everything to me to build partnerships. If I'm building partnerships and good rapport with others, then they're all they will remember my name. So I, I my goal is to be a referral based business. So I became a referral base. So I give a lot of business to other agents. I promote other businesses because me doing that is still putting my name in the forefront. Well, how did you know that, Katrina Cherry? Well, where did this client come from, Katrina Cherry? Well, how do you, where did you see that post, Katrina Cherry? Well, and it goes on and on and on and on. So that that's that um that that's that's my secret sauce. <laughs> awesome. Hello, I'm Bill Gallagher with Superior School of Real Estate, and I'm here with Preston Sandlin of Home Inspection Carolina. Preston, I've always liked your style, especially those pants, and also I've been interested in the home inspection business for a long time. Well, Bill, that's ironic. I've always admired your style, and I've always admired your ability to educate these fine folks for sometimes four, eight hours a day. I wish that I could do what you do. Hey, Preston, wouldn't it be cool if we switch Preston. We sure got what we wished for, buddy. We sure did. And now that you're the expert, Bill, I mean, you are wearing the pants. And I'm the instructor and the educator. Tell us what Home Inspection Carolina is doing these days to make the home buying process easier for realtors and home buyers. Well, Preston, all our home inspection reports now are online for the real estate agent and the client to review the report online mm -hmm. and to be able to create a repair list basically online by either clicking repair, accept, monetary compensation, and once they prepare the request, they can then press email, text, or print right then. You mean it's all automated, Bill? Absolutely, we are high tech. Wow. What else is Home Inspection Carolina doing different these days? Well, Preston, we're training our home inspectors to be non-alarmist. We are training them to put things into perspective and to simplify the message for the whole homeowner. Non-alarmist is key, Bill. You remember those days of the 100-page reports and those three-ring binders that would just go on and on and on, la, 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 la. Thank you for being a good non-alarmist. And Preston, one more thing. We fix the small stuff for free. Do you remember when home inspectors always put those little nitpicky items on those reports? Oh, bless their hearts. Well, at Home Inspection Carolina, if we can fix it in five minutes or less, we do it for free. We're better with a caulk gun than a keyboard any day. We just fix it. You, you mean there's no cost for this, Bill? Preston, it's free. Wow. Well, Preston, these pants really are a catch. Well, Bill, I've enjoyed wearing the suit, but I don't think I can wear it every day because I got to fix the small stuff for free, and I don't want to ruin a good suit. Preston, it's been a lot of fun flipping the switch.
awesome, awesome. Well, I got two more questions for the lightning round, and I'm sorry about okay. that ring, and I don't know how to stop that. <laughs> That's actually Brandy, because we've been going back and forth. I was going to try to meet her and give her the thing, and she's trying to call me, and like, oh. uh, through, but I'm like, I'm in the middle of a podcast, <laughs> <We're> <laughs> but all good. We're hiring Brandy. We're yeah, hiring. yeah, we're hurrying, we're hurrying. <laughs> but uh, all good. I'll take care of that, but I loved yeah. your answer. Should I decline it? I guess I figured it would. I, that's what I had to do with mine. I just kind of declined it. Yeah. Well, I thought it like, you know, after four rings or something, it would stop. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to be like hung up on them. Um, no, you know, okay. I, just, I just can't answer right this second. Um, <laughs> well, two questions in the lightning round. I know you got, you, you, I mean, you're a busy lady and you got, you got, uh, you got appointments and all that stuff. So I don't want to hold you up, but it's okay rock star uh, gold nuggets here you've been dropping here so um the two questions i have before the lightning round mm -hmm. um the, the first one is you alluded to coaching and um and that's you know with your son and then you know in in real estate so uh -huh. i have a question about coaching and then i want to ask about qualifying people for loans and get into some of the stuff that your kids do and how they might can help some people if they've got people who might have low credit scores to get them up to where they need to, need to be. But uh -huh. uh, so the first question is coaching. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you believe in coaching, you know, yeah. we're, if we're <laughs> talking to somebody out there who's starting out and, you know, they want to be one of those people who's still sitting there three, four years later, not yes. doing something else, you yes. know, uh, I think coaching <laughs> is a way to go. So how does, how do you recommend a real estate agent if they're starting out, find a coach or what qualities to look for um, how, how, or mentor what, mm. uh, and I mean, there's a lot of them out there and I think there are yes, a are. lot of good ones. <laughs> um, I mean, what, what do you, how, how would you, if, you know, you say you get messaged all the time, Hey, yeah, I, Katrina, I'm starting out in real estate. You know, I hear you advocate coaching. How do mm. I find a good coach for me? Okay. So for me, finding that good coach, finding a good coach, it, this is, this is key and choosing the coach. A good coach is going to emphasize and promote and push you to be true to yourself and your goals. They're going to they're going to help you build upon your capabilities, but also look at what might be your hindrances and your weaknesses. They're going to put you in a position to grow there and you'll but you should also know your position. So there are five positions in, in basketball, you have to know if you are a point guard, small forward, shooting guard, um, the center. You have to know if you are, um, um, if you are that, um, is it, did I say the shooting guard, the power forward, the center, um, the point guard, and I'm missing the fifth one, but you have to know, um, and the, the wingman, you have to know what your position is on your court. You have to know what you are. Um, I'm a head coach. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm, not a bench, I'm not a bench player. I'm not a second string. I'm, I'm a second string player um, in real estate. I'm also a point guard, but I'm also a shooting guard. But you have to know each, you have to know your own skill set. So going to, a, going to a coach doesn't necessarily make you a better agent, but it adds value to you. So I've had, um, I've had about two coaches that I've hired um, the first one we had to set uh, we had to set ways because she tried um, they they tried to get me to fit a a their formula um, what they thought was best for me. Well, I already know who I was. I didn't need you to define me. That I didn't need to be defined. So I already knew that. Um, I'm grateful that I ran into um, the coach that I have now, which is Marissa Boyle, and I got connected with Marissa Boyle coaching through Costello. Um, and what I like about Marissa is um, she shares her tools. Um, she shares her tools. She shares her why. And it's practical. It makes good, it, good, clear sense. And it's innovative and creative for today. Um, with a coach, if you're going to invest in a coach, that coach also needs to be making an investment in you. Um, your firms, um, good firms also provide great training. You know, great, great firms provide great training. Um, when you come out of real estate school, you don't necessarily know what type of training that you have. So uh, more, some firms stand out more than others because of their training programs. But that new agent needs to realize and understand that the training program is not free. 
So, <laughs> so you need to, under, is that program worth the investment? But you have to understand the training that you need. The first training is you need to understand the contracts. Most people want training to show me how to be a luxury agent. Show me how to make top dollars. Show me how to be a top producer. We need you to understand how to fill out a contract. <laughs> you, need to, you need to know that first. That's the first thing you need to know about becoming a realtor. Because if you can't, under, if you can't break down the law and the terminology of the contract, where, how are you going to climb up that ladder? Something has to set you apart there. So, so, um, so definitely get in that coach. And, the, and that's not necessarily a coach's job. It's your responsibility to know and understand your contract. So if, the, if your firm is offering that training, definitely um, do that. So for me, having a coach, what, what um, having a coach is for for my business is to help me take what's in me, my capabilities, and expand that, to grow that. Um, to add to that, you know, helping me pull out all these ideas and thoughts that I have, having another individual to bounce thoughts, um, thoughts off of um, stuff. I, I, we don't know everything. So a good coach is going to expose you to um, a great coach is going to um, they're going to expose you to great strategies right. and as well as a great firm, a great firm will expose you. They will they will give um, they will have great strategies there, but that's not free. You know, right. no, nothing in the world is free. If you come no. out of real estate school thinking everything is free and it doesn't matter if it is a firm that does 100 percent commission. It is not free. Building a business requires money. So uh, so, so that you're paying for something. You don't yeah, get yeah. to hang your license in a firm for free. <laughs> you know, it costs. So yeah, keep that in mind. So um, you have to decide um, what you're willing to pay for. And for me, um, when I chose my firm, it was about a partnership. I wanted to be partnered with a firm, but I did not want to be bothered. I wanted to do it my way. Um, one of my first, one of my first things in real estate was, I think it was from the Mary Tyler, uh, no, nope, Laverne and Shirley thing doing it my way. It, I absolutely had to do it my way. I didn't, I can't be micromanaged. I'm over that phase in my life. Um, I don't want anyone, you know, directly on my shoulder telling me what to do and what not to do. Now, I mean, please suggest it, you know, shoot me a message, a text, an email, but don't treat me like you're like, uh, uh, don't, yeah. uh, don't, don't do that. So, so um, those are, some, those are some things to remember. Same. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I, I've had some coaches too, and and I've had some that are like, you know, I've learned something from all of them. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you learn something from, but there's different styles. And I'm, I'm like yeah. that too. I'm like, some people like, like that almost military, you know, but I'm like, I don't. I'm too, rebe I'm too rebellious. Yeah. I almost have to learn <laughs> some things the hard way. I mean, because yeah. I just, I'm hard headed, but yeah. I do learn. I do learn. Yeah. Yeah, well, Katrina, <laughs> tell us how, um, let's say that I've got a client that's got, you know, credit score that uh, needs a little help, you know, yeah. to get them to qualify. <laughs> how, and I, I understand your kids have something to, that can help. What what could they do to help me get somebody who might be on the on the bubble there, credit yes. wise, get, get them over that, get them on the right side of that bubble, I guess. Yes. So when it comes to credit, that is a sticky topic. So yes, my children um, are credit repair specialists. They are my credit repair specialists and um, and business partners. So I have Lynetta, my daughter, um, who um, who started her business first. Lynetta um, On Point Credit Solutions LLC by Lynetta, and she taught it to her brother, and um, and and encouraged him to open his business, which is Mr. Lucas Credit Services. And I'm thankful and glad to merge those two businesses this year. They're going to do a merger. Um, are th they're going to merge their two businesses and come up under one name. So stay tuned 2022 for that big announcement. So, yeah. So if I have a client that needs credit repair um, and I always ask my buyer clients, are they aware of their credit score? And the reason I ask that question is because the first thing um, to qualify for a mortgage, you have to go through a credit check. Um, I'm, so I ask that hard question. Are you aware of your credit scores? Are you aware of the condition of your credit report. 
if they tell me yes, my next question is, what uh, resource are you using to monitor your scores and report? Most people are quick to say credit wise, credit karma, because they don't know who has time to follow all that stuff. We do what the bank, we do whatever the bank says is what we primarily do. But um, in, a, in a world where the money and rates are always changing, I believe that a, um, a um, responsible consumer being more responsible or next level responsible requires that we monitor our credit scores. So if I have a client that has a challenged or um, wounded credit score, so to speak, um, we, me, my children and I will take them through um, a credit analyzation. And we do that by going to my score IQ and um, which is a system that's compatible with my daughter's system. So, and my son. So, um, and, and a lot of people have that question, well, how in the world are they doing what they do? I promise you it is legal. Um, I have no time for the IRS or the or anyone else to come after us for doing anything that is um, that is unethical or illegal. So my daughter, is, their businesses are using software that allows them to clean and repair credit, but it's not just them doing it. That it's the consumer that's partnered with them. The consumer has to put in work. The buyer has to put in the work. So we'll go, uh, we'll analyze that credit report to see if we can do it. What we're looking for is collections, um, any derogatory items, wrong addresses, wrong names, too many inquiries, things that can be removed legally um, by disputing and challenging those things with the three credit bureaus, which is Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. We follow consumer laws. So we're not getting letters off of, off of Google. We're not uh, creating our own content. We do everything based on consumer law because the credit bureaus do, they will do things in error. Like I've had people tell me, well, I didn't apply for this card. Okay, well, why in the world is that on your credit report? And when it's time to apply for a home, that might be something negative or that might've caused a drop in the score. Um, the excessive uh, medical bills, some things count towards your DTI. If you have too many collections on your credit report, it can, um, uh, it can go against your debt to income ratios, calling you to be, uh, causing you to be mortgage ineligible. So we go in and clean it up a bit. Um, we clean it up, we dispute and challenge, um, and, we, and, we, and it can take us anywhere from, um, for, we ask that our clients be patient. It can take anywhere from 45 to 90 days or longer, depending on, um, depending on the weight of what's going on or what's going wrong on your credit report. Um, um, we've had success getting car repossessions removed, car repossessions, evictions, um, medical bills, old, um, old credit cards, um, cable bills, cell phone bills, things that were charged off and sent to a third party collector. Um, if they, if they, if no one responds to the disputes, they have to drop it off your credit because they can't verify anything. So there are consumer laws and consumer rights that we follow to get the job done. And my mother's, uh, my mother's um, testimony will always be one of my favorite stories because she went through bankruptcy. She went through a horrible divorce for over 15, 20 years. She thought that she would never be a homeowner. And we, we tested our system on our family first. So we my son-in-law went through credit repair to home ownership. My son-in-law and my daughter herself, before she got her business, they went from credit repair, credit repair to home ownership. Um, my mother, we took her from credit repair to home ownership using our business. Um, we thank, um, we're thankful for Evelyn Frazier down in uh, Florida who turned us on to, oh yes, you can repair your credit. Um, and and she, we turned it into a business. So my mother who had horrible credit for over 20 years after going through a divorce, she um, suffered a horrible bankruptcy. Um, she got through the bankruptcy and then, but she was renting for over 15 years after her divorce. I told her when I got my license, that's it. Renting is over. You will become a homeowner by December 31st, 2020. And we did it. Oh, <laughs> we awesome. got we awesome. did it. We and we got her credit report clean. We showed her how to rebuild her credit score. And in 2020, um, in the in the summer of 2020, she was able to get three pre-approval, pre-approvals. 
We chose to go with NBR Mortgage because we built a new home for, for her from the ground up. We, um, we, we put together, um, we, we joined her grandson and her together on a home loan. My son was already building his credit because he was new to credit. But at 21 years old, we, they joined, and my mother was 63 at the time. They joined their credit. We got grandma a house. Uh, we, we, we joined as a family and gifted awesome. her, her down payment and closing costs. And December 20th, uh, December 14th, 2020, she closed on her home. And I met that goal two weeks before I said I was going to do it. Nice. So that's how we know that credit repair to home ownership is possible. We have proven results using our businesses, now helping families in both North Carolina, South Carolina, as well as other states, helping them get their credit clean so that they have more opportunity. Now, if we analyze a credit report and it just shows a lack of responsibility altogether, we, we do wanna make sure that uh, that client is, um, is and us, that we are a good match. And we don't take any money from our clients without first analyzing their credit report. And we know for sure that we can get it done. That's awesome. I wish, man, I wish I would have known you like back. When, right. <laughs> I remember when I first started, I, I didn't really have I bad credit. I, I use my children for myself too. Like they're my, you know, there, there's some things I'm like, you know what? This has been on my credit too long. I, I just don't have time to deal with it. Why is it even there? Yeah. You know, my see, problem see what was- we can do. My problem when I first started out was I had no credit. I mean, I didn't have yeah. bad credit. I just didn't have any credit. Yeah. And yeah. and then, so like I had, I, cause I didn't believe in credit cards when I was young. And so now, I mean, now you gotta have credit cards right? and, and exactly. get the points and all that. But like, yeah. I kept applying for credit cards and they kept denying me because I had no history. I mean, I was in college, you know, yeah. and then, yeah. uh, and then like, then they started denying me because I had excess inquiry, you know, because every time they, you know, finally Citibank gave me a card and I still yeah. have it today. But, uh, oh. you know, initially it was like $500 limit. I wish that yeah. it was today because that would keep me out of trouble. But that's right. a whole nother. <laughs> right. Good stuff. Yeah, I, I definitely understand that. Keeping those utilization rates down. Good. It's, it's work. It's yeah. work. But we encourage that that first time homeowner. You know, if if get keep those util, util, credit card utilization rates down low, pay off those debts, and if anyone has any uh, credit challenges or concerns, let my family and I um, assist you. Even realtors, some realtors feel like, well, gosh, Katrina's a realtor. I don't want her. I don't want her kids sending my clients to them. No, no, no. That's not how we do business. If you're a realtor with clients that need um, uh, you need assistance with their credit. If they're your clients, they're your clients. That has nothing to do with me. Um, I believe in the principle of reaping what you sow. So I do unto others what I have done unto me. I don't want anyone snatching business from me. So I wouldn't do that to anyone else. Awesome. All right. Well, let's get to the um, lightning round, Katrina, because I know you okay. got the appointments. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do is give you a this or that. You pick one or okay. the other. Okay. Okay. Um, dog or cat? Oh. Dog. <laughs> Football or basketball? Basketball. Christmas vacation or elf? Uh, Christmas vacation. Celebrity crush. Celebrity crush. Let's I can see. come back to that if you want. Uh, probably uh, The Rock. No. Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> gotcha. All right. Uh, we won't. I can edit that for your husband there if you. I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. We all got uh, cardio or weights. Um, wow, cardio. iOS or Android? Apple or Android? Apple. Uh, my, uh, my whole family is, but I'm I'm an Android. <laughs> I'm an Android. Uh, do you like a big party or a small gathering? <sighs> small gathering, but. It, I prefer it. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, what's worse to have to do, laundry or dishes? Laundry. <laughs> um, do you, uh, tennis shoes or flip flops? Tennis shoes. Um, most important in a like a business partner, uh, intelligent or funny? Most important. That's a tough one. I, I would say funny. <laughs> would you rather go to a theme park or the beach beach coffee hot or cold mm, hot 
And the most important question, toilet paper always asks this, over or under? Like the, the you know, over. Oh, over. yeah. I've had, yeah. <laughs> I've had, almost everybody says over. Two people said under, but they said it was because of, uh, if you got a cat or something, I didn't know this, that the cat, if it's under, they can't, is when it's over, oh, they wow. can undo it there, so. Okay, well, I'm going to have that, so I won't have that. <laughs> I know home inspectors that will change, not, not home inspectors Carolina, but, I, you know, in home wellness, of course, like, don't be messing with people's toilet paper, man. <laughs> That's people's stuff. Um, well, two, two last questions here. Uh, funniest story that you've ever, funniest thing that's happened to you or that you know of, you can change the names to protect the guilty. <laughs> Okay. Uh, in okay. real estate so far, or funniest real estate story you have so far? Funniest real estate story. And I know it puts you on the spot. For all the listeners, you know, I didn't, I didn't give it's her a okay. script Let's or the see. questions ahead of time. Yeah. I know it's putting you on the spot. And um, you can change the names or <laughs> to okay. protect. Okay. Or so weirdest I, or something like, you know, crazy, I guess, craziest story. Okay. So I'm think I would say, oh, wow. Oh my goodness, the, the craziest story that, but this one infuriated me, but it has some funny in it as well. But I was, my client and I, we were clear to close. Right. We were given a clear to close. We were celebrating. I had the closing gifts. I had the balloons. We were ready to rock and roll. And at 9 a.m., I get a message that the loan is not clear. Uh oh. <laughs> and it was the senior loan officer that sent me the message the day before that said it was clear to close. So oh, my clients and I were preparing. We were headed, um, we were getting ready for the closing appointment and get this message and phone call that is not clear. Well, <laughs> you don't do that to me and my clients, not right, me. Right. So, and I'm, you know, this was last year and I'm thinking, what in the world? I, I thought clear clear to close was the time the celebratory time yeah, so, yeah, now, yeah. so now i have an experience where i've gotten a clear to close and it's not clear omg so now i'm no longer excited about clear to close thanks to that particular um business that particular company that i will not ever use again but mm. um but we got that clear to close um the um we and, and but the next day we find out it wasn't clear to close that family was crushed this was a family that um, they had, they had a, a four children collectively. They were excited about, you know, getting the new home. And then we get to the closing day and they're telling us it's not clear. And I said, okay, this is not going to work. I'm not going home. We dropped, we went to the attorney's office and we sat in the parking lot um, from, it was probably late morning to almost 4.30 in the evening. And I kept knocking on the door every few minutes. Are we closing yet? Every couple mm. hours, are we closing yet? I said, I'm not leaving this parking lot until we get keys. I said, <laughs> I, I, I'm not leaving. And and the the guy that was in there doing doing the sign, and he's like, okay, is she crazy? But uh, yes. But I said, <laughs> and I and I sat in my car, and we emailed and texted back and forth between loan officers, paralegals, um, um. Uh, different assistants. Um, and I'm, we just kept going back and forth. I'm like, okay, what else is needed? What else is needed? Where do I need to drive? Where do I need to go? Every hour. Do we have a time yet? Do we have a time yet? <laughs> what time are we closing? I'm not leaving until we get keys. I'm not. I'm not leaving. And and I mean, and and I kept on and I kept on and I kept on and we finally closed. It drove me insane that day. Oh so I think God. that is the that is the craziest. Yet funny is I laugh at it now because I thought did so I you did really you did tell? get the keys though right you did they get the did keys. and I'm thinking <laughs> did I really tell this person that I'm not going home until we get the keys who does that and I thought at that point in time okay yeah you're you're really crazy but I was dedicated to my clients there was no way that I was going to let this injustice happen and I told them in Katrina fashion I am ready to call the news call the news. Because what greater way to go viral? <laughs> so so I, I will use this experience to do whatever I have to do to make sure your buyer rights are protected. And they did everything they were supposed to do 
They And I know they sent the requested documents because I said, after you send it to your loan officer, make sure you send it to me so that I can have proof that you actually sent these documentations. So it was my pleasure and honor to be an insane realtor for my clients by knocking on the door. Is it, are we closing? Because I'm not going on until we get the keys. <laughs> That's awesome. And but got the keys. That was Ooh, so that bad. Of them. It would have been so much. Be- I mean, if there was a problem, they should have told you before. I mean, to tell right. you you're clear to close and then you're not. I mean, that's and like, it was, and it was that's like telling doctor. your kids, we, yeah. we're, we, we're going to Carowinds and then tell them, like, no, we're not. They're like, you, right. you got that, their hopes up this high and then you crushed them. It would have been yeah. better off to say, you know, hey, we're going to try to go to Carowinds. I'm not sure. But to tell them the definite and then come back and say, no, that's that's messed up, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't I don't get I don't I don't get excited as I used to be used to when I hear clear to close. I mean, I get a little excited, but not much. <laughs> I hear you. Well, Katrina, thank you so much for your time. Uh, you've given a lot of gold nuggets here. If some of the listeners, well, first of all, if any of you guys got value and you know you did, go follow Katrina, like her stuff, Instagram, um, uh, Facebook. So I'm going to ask you, like, where are all those places they can find you and could they message you? And also uh, give out uh, your your kids that, that credit repair uh, if somebody has that. Where So where are all the places they can find y'all, I guess? Yes. <laughs> follow up with you. So my prim- you can primarily find us on Facebook and Instagram. So we're we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. No, excuse me, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. So you can find us there. I am on LinkedIn as well, but we primarily reside at Facebook and Instagram. Um, for uh, you can find me, um, Katrina Cherry. Just you know, you can you can pr- you can Google that. Google my name and find me. Um, um, you can also find my children if you have anyone that needs, um, have, if you have credit and questions, I am their admin. So you can reach me. You can direct message me on Facebook or, um, or Instagram, but you can find them also, um, on point credit solutions by Lynetta. She's on Facebook, Mr. Lucas credit services, LLC by Justin Lucas. He's on Facebook and they're both on Instagram as well. As I stated, stay tuned for their 2022 merger of, of coming up under one business with their um, credit repair services still offering the same um, the same services. But um, we're going to take it up. We're going to take that up a notch. Um, so if you have any questions about anything, whether it be real estate, becoming a realtor, um, coaching, um, uh, uh, credit services, we are here. I'm an open book. Um, for, I'm an open book. Um, I don't mind partnering with you and a- asking those questions. Um, and yes, you can direct message me on Facebook and Instagram. I don't mind. Awesome. Well, thank you, Katrina. Thank you for all the value you bring. And I'm sure I will see you at the next event. Yes, uh, you will. Our, our, our I missed you guys day. yesterday. I hate I missed it. Oh. I know. I thought, where's Katrina? I, I knew you must have had a closing or something though, going on. But. Yeah, but I will definitely be there next time. And I can't wait. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Katrina. Oh, you're welcome. And you have a great day. Thank you so much for asking me. And it's been great. Awesome. You've been listening to the Successful Real Estate Broker Podcast with your host, Preston Sandlin. Join us on the next episode where we'll be talking to a successful agent or vendor about the right things to do and the wrong things you should avoid. Join us on the next episode of the Successful Real Estate Broker Podcast.